No, we'll get a little bit amazed with artificial intelligence when it comes to revenue cycle management. Revenue cycle management is a topic that increased in importance, at least in perception, over the last two or three years drastically, for the very simple reason, because of move from volume to value. I have with me today Anthony Steele from HEI, who will talk us a little bit through the AI when it comes to revenue cycle management, and maybe it will take us into the wonderland and down the rabbit hole. Right. Over to you. Thanks, Mick. So, uh, I will eventually get over to predicting uh, patient financial outcomes using artificial intelligence, but if you'll allow me to deviate for a second, what I'd like to do is take a little bit of a tangent in regards to my journey to get here. I'm uh, based in the UK, not based here in the Middle East. Um, and when I got the invitation to come and speak here at Arab Health uh, a couple of weeks ago from Mick, um, the first thing that I had to do was I had to go and plan my visit. So by planning my visit, it meant that I need to work out how I was going to get here, where I was going to stay, how long I was going to come for, and most importantly, for my bosses probably, how much this was going to cost. So here I am in the UK on my Emirates uh, plane. You can tell it's the UK because, because of the weather, so it is authentic. <laughs> I've tried to be as authentic as I could. But backtrack those two or three weeks ago for when I was planning my visit, what was the first thing that I was able to do to work out what my expenses were going to be? Well, there were a lot of online resources that I could use to go and try and estimate how much my journey was going to cost. So, Online comparison sites for travel is something that has been around for, for quite a while now. Um, there's a few kind of brands up there. There's, there's, the market is flooded with these types of things. My favorite one is this one called Kayak. What Kayak allows me to do is go and search for my flights and my hotels all in one. And then there's a few smarts behind it as well. There's a, some filters on the left-hand side where I can try and select what, what day I, what time I want to st leave. Um, there's also a really interesting feature that happens on Kayak where it, it, there's some hocus pocus behind the scenes to say, we think now might be the right time to buy a flight or we think maybe you should wait to buy a flight because we think, we predict that they might get cheaper. How does it do that? Pocus pocus. <coughs> so I was able to go in and I was able to use a price comparison site and go and get a, a, a use the, using those filters, I was able to accurately price up how much my trip to here was going to cost, present that to my boss, and fingers crossed he let me come, and he did. <coughs> price comparison websites, not just for travel, there's quite a few examples out there if you have a look. If I wanted to buy a new mobile phone, if I wanted to buy car insurance, house insurance, pet insurance, insurance is big for it. Um, just, just about everything has a price comparison website. And here's some, just an example, that three examples that I just pulled up when, when trying to buy a mobile phone. So this, this type of data out there has, has kind of revolutionized the, the way we as consumers travel, buy electronics, all sorts of things. Now, thanks for indulging me on my tangent, but if I bring this back now to the reason we're all here, healthcare. If I wanted to go and have a planned procedure done, let's say I wanted some dental work or some cosmetic surgery or a knee replacement or a hip replacement, how would I go and price that up? Well, if you go out to Google and you do some searches, you may be able to find Hospitals will, will uh, advertise themselves on their own websites and they'll have a prices section we'll, which will start, we we'll have a rough guide of how much something is going to cost. Or price comparison websites actually are starting to exist for healthcare as well, but with one key difference. If you go out to a price comparison website for healthcare, you'll see things like this. You'll see a, a button to go and inquire about to, to try and generate a quote, or for a hip replacement, we'll say from 70,000 dirhams or something like that. 
Why is that? What makes healthcare different? Well, healthcare is different because with healthcare, that price usually needs to be tailored. It depends on, could depend on key items of data like your weight, your height, your gender, previous clinical information. So quite often, it's not just cookie cutter like it is for a flight or a hotel. We'd need to have a consultation. We need to sit down with the patient. We'd need to say, okay, what is this plan procedure? What is your previous clinical history? However, there's been a, big, a couple of big changes in the last few years, going back to my example with my price comparison website for flights, a couple of big innovations. Number one, big data. We're aggregating data, we're storing it at population levels. And then number two, machine learning, artificial intelligence, where we can go and we can learn about patients' behavior, patients' demographics, try to form patterns and have our machines learn in order to generate clinical outcomes and, and predict clinical outcomes, but also financial outcomes. Now, as our electronic, electronic medical records and revenue cycle systems become more aligned, clinical-driven revenue cycle, we are able to link that data together and we, and we have machines that use, utilize that data to learn. So, what's the advantage of that for the, for the consumer? I think we've talked about the consumer experience for travel, for mobile phones. We're, we're wanting to get there for surgery, for planned procedures as well. But what are the benefits going to be for facilities? We're using the same information, using the same data, using the same artificial intelligence. We, we're going to be able to, to predict those financial outcomes just as clearly as we could predict our clinical outcomes as well. That's going to mean ac more accurate forecasting of how much those pr procedures are going to cost. Maybe we won't need to have so much time spent from expensive clinicians having to go and generate those claims if we can generate them easier. Long term, maybe we can get down to more, uh, more of a price comparison website scenario just by using simple technology that exists today to, in order to expose those APIs so brokers can access that information. Giving consumers the more data, not just financial data, but also clinical data, to allow them to make the best decision with using, utilizing a lot less resources from your organizations. This is where we need to get to. Big data and analytics plus artificial intelligence or machine learning in order to, to produce more realistic and more predictable financial outcomes, linking those with the clinical outcomes and being able to um, give our, our consumers, our customers, hopefully our patients, access to that data in order to make better, better decisions. So the tomorrow talks are continuing and we talked before a little bit about the of health and life and how important it is that we want and we need to take an active part into our well-being. There are different tools and technologies that we are using. Artificial intelligence was one of them, big data, making information out of everything that is being captured. But then how do we get it closer to us? How do we get it outside of the four walls of a health facility? How can we proactively manage our health, our well-being? And that is something what Tarek Hussein will tell us about a little bit. He's the CEO of Bodio, one of the startups here in the region that is trying to change the game. Hello. How you all doing? How you feeling? Oh, there's one. You can catch him and do some results on him. Um, so, yeah, the title is um, Constantly Empowering Communities for a healthy and happier tomorrow. And that title in itself 
is, um, is quite a statement. Um, but before we look at the, um, what it actually means, I think we need to look at what it means for the different entities. And for each different entity, it means a slightly different thing. So you have your government entities. Um, for them, it's about um, monitoring um, serious heart conditions, uh, diabetes, population health in general. For corporations, um, it's more about um, the workforce, making them more empowered. Um, also, uh, for them to uh, decrease absenteeism, um, decrease presenteeism, and maybe even reduce insurance costs, for instance. Then we have for hospitals and clinics. And for hospitals and clinics, it's more about gathering the data, making everything flow much better, um, better patient wellness, maybe also cost cutting as well. And then we have the end user, which is the consumer, which is the heart of it all. And for them, it's probably a little bit about looking good, feeling good, but ultimately probably living a little bit longer. Yeah, because that's what we all aim to do is hopefully live a bit longer. And then we have the technology. And the first thing that I did when I woke up this morning, well, maybe the second thing that I did when I woke up this morning, is um, picked up my phone. And my 73-year-old mom, who's staying with me now, and I walked into the bedroom. She wakes up before me. She's up at like 5.30. And she was on her iPad. And she was scrolling through her iPad. And most mornings, she's scrolling through her phone. So it's not just, you know, the youth of the today or the, you know, the mid-age people. Everyone's empowered now and uses the mobile phone. So it's an integral part of our lives. And part of that is also, you know, the apps and the wearables that we have on these phones. You know, Michael picks on it earlier on that everybody now has some kind of an app on their phone or some kind of a wearable that they're using. But what's interesting is that although I love apps and wearables, I use them myself. But what does it mean when you've done 10,000 steps? What does it actually mean? What does it mean when you've ran 10 kilometers around the marina in 30 minutes with your heart rate at 143? How does that empower you to actually reach your goals? And although all these clever tools are great but at the moment we don't have enough information if you like to enable us to actually make these changes that we want or reach our health and fitness goals and I'll give you a good example I'm sure a lot of you now it's January still just about but at the beginning of the year you must have been like okay new year new me we've all been there yeah so it's like at the beginning of the year, you're like, I've got to join a gym or I've got to go to a gym. You know, the gym's like, I don't know, between 1,000 and 10,000 dirhams a year, depending on which gym you go to. And the first thing that the personal trainer does is he weighs you. So you get on the scales. For me, I'm 84 kilos. Get to March. Been working away like a real trooper. And I'm probably half a kilo heavier or half a kilo lighter, but because it's the way we're wired, we look at that bit of data, that scale, and we say, geez, man, what a waste of time. Let's go for a pizza or let's go for a curry. And because that data is, I mean, it's your weight, but at the end of the day, if you knew that you had lost 15% fat mass and gained 20% muscle mass, that data is quite motivational. You know, saying that you've actually achieved something is quite motivational. And I think that what brings me on to how we can actually empower people to, you know, constantly empower communities for a healthy and happier tomorrow. And I think it's about having or giving and allowing them to get that data, the right type of data. So when we talk to consumers, we shouldn't say the word data because it confuses them. Yeah? It's, it's you know, information or it's steps or it's um, 
I don't know, miles or whatever. Um, but I think if you're able to then take this data and use it to enable you to better take care of yourself, then it's a good starting point. And I think what we've done is we've created a capsule which enables us to basically take your blood pressure, um, your blood sugar, your height, your weight, um, your body composition, which is your uh, fat mass, muscle mass, bone density, hello, um, and um, hydration. And this would be appearing all over the UAE mid this year and the idea is to have it within two and a half kilometers of any community. And it looks like a very expensive contraption, and it is an expensive contraption. However, for the users, for the people, for the consumers, whether you're an employee, whether you're um, a patient, whether you're a, just a you know, your standard person, it's free to use. So we're not charging people to go in and use this. What we're doing is saying that we want you to go and use this, get all this data of yourselves. And what we can do is pair it with some nutritional information. We have over 300,000 different recipes on there, on the app. Um, we have over 6,000 training programs. Um, and we're able to then offer you advice on nutrition uh, through nutritionists that are in a call center um, or a coach or a doctor. And what happens basically is that all the data that you gather through the pod um, basically goes up into our cloud and down onto our app and then you can view it on the app and you can monitor your sleep patterns, you can monitor your nutrition and you can really start aiming towards living a healthy and happier life. Now, the other thing that we do is, of course, there's you as an individual, yeah, you want to be fit and healthy. But how do we then help you in the whole ecosystem of keeping you healthy as well, wellness? So the reason why we're here with Cerna is because they're one of the companies that are helping us validate some of the data. Because it's no good if doctors and hospitals can't use this. So with your, your permission, what we do is that we link you to the hospital or the clinic that you go to. And doctors then can look at this information and then prevent serious illnesses by monitoring over a period of long period of time. Because where I grew up in England, my same GP, I knew him for 16 years. And then when he finally retired, the guy who was in the office next door, he took over. I even remember their names, Dr. Griffiths and Dr. Chitness. But in Dubai, I've been to the doctors uh, 10 or 15 times. I can't actually remember which clinic I went to, and I definitely can't remember which doctor I went to see. And none of them had my patient history. I would walk in there, the first thing they do is, you go through the standard tests, you know, because they want to know what's wrong with you right now. But if they had an indication of your wellness over the last six months, or the last two months, or the last year, they would be able to better prescribe medicine for you and look at your condition over a longer period of time. Now, obviously this means making sure that the data has been validated and for doctors to use it it means that they need to understand what that data is so it's all good and well taking all of these vitals from you but it needs to be FDA approved and CE approved and all of our data is however the whole experience needs to be FDA and CE approved and then the data needs to be looked by an individ individual auditor who looks at that data and says yes doctors can use this so Overall, um, the idea is to be part of a, an ecosystem that enables you day to day to keep track of your vitals, but at the same time help you with getting to your goal, whether it's a dietary goal, so you might be there to lose weight, it might be there to monitor fitness, uh, and it might be just to monitor your, your health. Um, and we can also, what we've also done is we have a bunch of um, wearables that you can pair with. So our app becomes an aggregator 
um, so that all of the apps that you're currently using, because you have an app and you have a wearable for each one, which means that your phone gets filled up with all these different apps and wearables, but you can put them all into our app, and the more data we have on you, the more information that we have. Plus, we have our own proprietary devices, which enable you to monitor your body composition, your blood sugar, your blood pressure, and your weight at home. So if you don't want to go to one of our capsules, um, one of our pods, they're called, or you're, it's too far away for you, you can monitor this on a daily basis. And what this allows us to do is have a completely holistic approach to you looking after yourself and better take caring, better take caring of yourself. Because as a user, we have your data, we have your um, vitals, we have the data from the wearables, health devices, from the labs, from the web and mobile. And what we're then able to do is subjectively and objectively look, objectively look at that data and create real-time interventions and better outcomes. That's basically it. Have you got any questions, guys? No questions at all despite that the consumerization will be important. But Tarek, thank, thank you very much. much. Appreciate it.